The sages said, Sutta, O Sutta of great intellect, a wonderful tale has been narrated by you. Blessed indeed is the Maya of Shiva. All mobile and immobile things depend upon it. When the two attendants of Lord Rudra had left at their own will, what did the infuriated Narada, the sage disquieted by Kamadeva, do? Sutta said, After cursing the two attendants of Shiva suitably, the sage, still under the earlier delusion, looked into the water and saw that his face was quite normal. It was also due to Shiva's will. He did not wake from the delusion still again due to Shiva's will. Thereupon, recollecting that it might have been a deception of Hari, he became unbearably infuriated and went to Vishnuloka. There, he angrily poured abusive words, blazing like a kindled fire, since his wisdom had vanished due to Shiva's will. Narada said, O Vishnu, you are extremely wicked, deceptive enchanter of the world. You are unable to brook others' enthusiastic success. You dabble in illusory tactics, and your intentions are always dirty. Formerly, you assumed the form of an enchantress and showed your deceptive power. You made the demons drink liquor and not the nectar. If, out of pity, Shiva had not drunk poison, O Vishnu, all your illusory tactics would have been quelled, since you take pleasure only in deception. O Vishnu, a deceptive path is extremely attractive to you. You had never been of saintly nature, but the Lord made you free from control. What is done by Shiva, the Supreme Atman, does not seem proper. Thinking of your influence and strength, when you act independently and seeing the way you go, he has now repented. He has announced that a Brahmana is superior to all, thereby making the Vedas pronounced by him authoritative. O Vishnu, knowing that, I shall now teach you through that power, so that hereafter you will never do such things. You are fearless because till now you have not come into clash with an equally powerful person. Now you will derive, O Vishnu, the fruit of your own deeds. After saying this, the sage, still under the influence of Maya, furiously cursed Vishnu, thereby exhibiting the superiority of his Brahminical power. O Vishnu, the enchanter that you are, you made me distressed for the sake of a woman. O Hari, you shall experience misery in that human form which you initiated with your deceptive tactics. Your allies will be those whose face you assign to me. O inflictor of miseries upon others, you shall get the misery of separation from a woman. You shall have the travails of a human being deluded by ignorance. Thus Narada, himself deluded by ignorance, cursed Hari. Vishnu quietly accepted the curse, praising the Maya of Shambhu. Thereafter Shiva, of great divine sport, withdrew his enchanting Maya, whereby Narada became wise as before and free from delusion. When the Maya vanished, he became as intelligent as before, regaining perfect knowledge and becoming free from distress. He was surprised at his own action in the meantime. He cursed himself after repenting again and again. He praised the Maya of Shiva, which could enchant even wise people. On realizing his mistakes due to illusion, Narada, the most excellent of the devotees of Vishnu, fell at his feet. Consoled by Hari and freed from wicked ideas, he said, Being deluded and evil-minded, I have spoken many wicked words to you. O oh Lord, I heaped curses on you. O oh Master, please make them ineffective. I have committed a great sin. Certainly I will be falling into a hell. O oh Hari, I am your slave. Please direct me what to do, whereby I may destroy my sins and prevent my downfall into hell. Saying thus, the excellent sage once again fell at Vishnu's feet, and with a mind purified, repented sincerely. Thereupon Vishnu lifted him up and spoke affably and courteously. 
Vishnu said, Do not be sorry too much. Undoubtedly you are my true devotee. Dear sage, now listen. I shall tell you what is certainly beneficial to you. You will not fall into hell. Shiva will make you happy. Deluded by your haughtiness, you disobeyed the instructions of Shiva. The true bestrower of fruits according to the actions, he has given you this result. Be sure in your mind that everything has happened in accordance with Shiva's wish. That Lord Shiva, the Supreme Lord, removes haughtiness. He is the Supreme Brahman, the Supreme Atman, existence, knowledge, and bliss. He is free from the three gunas, changes, and deviations. He is beyond rajas, sattva, and tamas. He is both saguna and nirguna, with and without attributes. He himself, availing of his own maya, manifests into three forms, Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahesh. In his attributeless pure form, he is glorified as Shiva, the Supreme Atman, Maheshwara, the Supreme Brahman, the Undecaying, the Endless, and Mahadev. Serving him, Brahma becomes the creator and I the sustainer of the worlds. He himself and the manifestation as Rudra is the annihilator always. Different from Maya, the pure being in the form of Shiva is the Sakshin, cosmic witness, and moving about according to his will, indulging in divine sport, he blesses his devotees. O sage Narada, please listen to a good remedy that bestows happiness, removes all sins, and yields worldly pleasures and salvation. Cast off all your doubts. Sing the songs of noble glory of Shiva. With your mind not turning to anything else, always repeat the thousand names of Shiva and his hymns. By his japa, all of your sins will perish instantaneously. After saying this to Narada, Vishnu continued mercifully, O sage, do not be grief-stricken. Nothing has been perpetuated by you. It was Shiva who did everything. There is no doubt in this. It was Lord Maheshwara who deluded your splendid intellect and made you suffer on account of love. It was he who made you his mouthpiece and cursed me. In this manner, the great conqueror of death, Kala of Kala, always devoted to the uplift of his devotees, made his own conduct of life manifest in the world. There is no other lord and master so loving and pleasure-inspiring unto me as Shiva. The same Parameshwara bestows all power on me. O sage, perform his adoration. Worship him always. Hear and sing his glory. Perpetually pay him homage. He who approaches Shiva by means of his body, mind, and speech is a great scholar. He is called a living, liberated soul. The name Shiva, blazing like a forest conflagration, reduces mountainous heaps of great sins to ashes without any difficulty. True. It is undoubtedly true. The different kinds of miseries arising from sins shall be destroyed only through the worship of Shiva and not through other means. He who always seeks refuge in Shiva, O sage, is the real follower of the Vedas, a meritorious soul and a blessed scholar. He must resort to him by means of his body, speech, and mind forever. The different sacred rites of those who have full faith in the worship of Shiva the destroyer of Tripura, become fruitful instantaneously. O great sage, there are not so many sins in the world as the worship of Shiva is capable of destroying. Innumerable heaps of sins like that of the slaughter of a Brahmana perish by remembering Shiva. Truth, I am telling you the truth. The sins that usually cause worldly existence for persons who cross the ocean of worldly existence in the raft of Shiva's names, perish undoubtedly. The sins at the root of worldly existence certainly are destroyed by the acts of Shiva's name. 
Persons scorched and distressed by the conflagration of sins must drink the nectar of Shiva's names. Without that, there is no peace and tranquility for those who are scorched and distressed by the sin's wildfire. Those who are drenched by the downpour of the nectarian names of Shiva are not distressed in the midst of the conflagration of worldly existence. There is no doubt in this. Immediate salvation can be achieved only by the people who have performed penance in various lives. They alone will have devotion for Shiva, the cherished consort of Parvati. Men who frequently indulge in passions of love and hatred will never have devotion for Shiva. Devotion that extends to other deities is futile. It is necessary to be exclusively devoted to Shiva. It is my conviction that salvation is easy of access only to the person who has exclusive and unflinching devotion for Shiva and not for any other. Even if he commits endless sins, he will be freed from them all if he has true devotion for Shiva. There is no doubt about it. Just as trees in the forest are reduced to ashes in the wildfire, so also the sins of the devotees of Shiva are burnt away in the fire of Shiva's names. He who is ever devoted to the worship of Shiva, with his body purified by ashes, definitely crosses the terrible and endless expanse of the ocean of worldly existence. A man serving the three-eyed Shiva is never sullied by sins, even if he misappropriates a brahmana's wealth or kills many brahmanas. This has been definitely concluded by ancestors after going through all the Vedas that the sole means of destroying worldly existence is the worship of Shiva. From now onwards, you shall always worship Lord Shiva, who is Shambhu and Sadashiva, with care, effort, and due observance of the rules of procedure. Dusting your body from head to foot profusely and carefully with particles of ashes, you shall perform japa of the five-syllabled mantra of Shiva, well known in all the Vedas. You shall wear on the different parts of your body rudraksha beads pleasing to Shiva, repeating the respective mantras with devotion and observing the rules of procedure. Listen to Shiva's anecdotes forever. Narrate the stories of Shiva always. Strenuously worship the devotees of Shiva again and again. Without blundering, ever seek refuge in Shiva, because perpetual worship of Shiva bestows bliss. Bearing the lotus-like feet of Shiva within your pure heart, carry on at first the pilgrimage to various holy centers of Shiva, O excellent sage. Observing the unrivaled greatness of Shiva, the supreme Atman, O sage, you must next go to Anandavana, which is a great favorite of Shiva. Seeing Shiva, the Lord of the universe, there, worship him with devotion. After bowing to him and eulogizing him, you will become free from all doubts. Thereafter you must go to Brahma Loka, O sage, to achieve your wishes. That is my command to you out of love. O sage, after bowing to and specifically eulogizing your father, Brahma, you shall ask him many points regarding Shiva's greatness with an endearing mind. Brahma, the foremost among the devotees of Shiva, will narrate to you the greatness of Shiva as well as the hymn of a thousand names out of love. O sage, from now onwards become a devotee of Shiva, solely devoted to Shiva. You will be liberated. Shiva will grant you his special blessings. After advising the sage thus, Vishnu was pleased. Remembering, saluting, and eulogizing Shiva, he vanished from that place.